Hi everybody, this is completely um, random. I have no idea who is up because it's probably 1 a.m. Um, New York time and I still haven't adjusted to the East Coast from the uh, West Coast. So I'm still really wide awake. So I haven't gone live since I've arrived here and so I thought that I would uh, go live and have a chat with everybody, see how everyone's doing, um, and discuss some of the topics that I've re recently posted about. I know there was a lot of people who who wanted to ask my opinion on things. So, here I am in New York City, on the other side of the world, <laughs> and um, I'm really happy to be here, but I've had a lot of accommodation problems and I've had about eight different transfers within the last two weeks. So I'm a little bit, little bit over living in the suitcase, but anyway, whatever, that's traveling life. So thank you to everyone who's welcoming me to the, to the East Coast. I have to tell you that I actually love the East Coast. It probably resonates with me a bit better than the West Coast. Um, one thing that I did want to talk about was the um, the Epstein topic that I have been blogging about. I wanted to bring it up because there's a lot of different opinions going around, and I'm not saying that I have a valid, um, you know, 100% uh, solidified opinion, but I really do think that it was murder. A lot of people are misusing the term fake news. They misuse um, uh, the word distraction. So distraction um, and fake news, they're just, uh, it just is being abused to the point where everyone thinks everything is fake. Everyone thinks everything is a distraction. And then that's supposed to be intelligent, you know, and, and um, I think some things really do happen and I really do think that he was murdered. There is a really big theory saying, and I'm not saying that it's incorrect, but a really big th theory which is focusing on Epstein being alive. So his murder being fake news and for several different reasons, you know, some are saying it's a white hat thing, some are saying that it's not. Um, I really don't think this is the case and I will tell you something that you know people might be skeptical about but there is a a source that I really hold her quite high in her sort of um, uh, medium abilities and also her multi-dimensional access within herself and she actually she actually said that she in the in the astral plane when she was astral projecting actually saw Epstein being murdered but he had a contract. He had a contract to only release um, the lower echelon um, people in relation to a lot of this, you know, tra uh, sex trafficking, uh, sex trafficking in a cult. So the top echelon people were never going to be revealed through Epstein. But he still had vital information, you know, in connecting um, all of the dots. So I wanted to just sort of put that out there for those of you who you know are come will come back on this you know later on because um, I'll leave this up for the 24 hours I really do think that he was murdered I think he was intentionally murdered and I don't think he's still alive well not his physical vessel at least in this dimension so some of you might agree with me, some of you may not, but the source that I do trust really saw the murder in the astral plane. Everyone forgets, you know, the astral plane. Okay, so I'm not, I won't go, for those of you asking about the Epstein um, story, it's something you're going to have to go and look into, it's, you're going to have to sort of research it. It's, it's quite, it's quite heavy. Um, I know that the source did mention that she saw a few faces while she was in the astral plane. So she did, while she was in the astral plane, she saw um, 
there was a there was a very famous singer, but she didn't reveal these names. But she said they're very very high up people. Um, and that's how it works. You know, this is how the medium stuff, you know, works. It's not conspiratorial. Um, there are people who can access other timelines. <laughs> there's obviously a very upset person saying there's no astral plane. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that if you actually access remote viewing yourself, you'll you'll actually know that there is astral. No one can access timelines. Oh, this person's freaking out. Uh, I'm like I'm I'm like pushing on their belief system, and they just can't accept it. Uh, yeah, it is in the astral plane. Um, <laughs> there is an astral plane, um, uh, and if you research into the military's remote viewing. This is actually a process that the remote viewers actually did. No astral plane. Oh my god, wait. Are you a flat earther? Uh, I just can't take any ser comments. Seriously. Uh, how, how amazing is my vacation? I've had a challenging vacation, but I've had some awesome moments as well, so I'm really grateful for those. Um, but I've been here for a lot of the spiritual stuff, so I've been connecting with some of the most amazing people. Um, <laughs> there's no astro plane, only astronauts. No, astral. Are you saying that about the other person, or are you saying that to me? There's definitely an astral plane. Um, I don't know how any, I don't know how anyone who actually understands esotericism can actually even doubt that. So, I think if anyone supports quantum theory and they're denying an astral plane, then they don't really know what they're talking about. I don't know if I can rate the trip like out of ten. I feel like I've been working a lot of the time, except. For when I've been in Vegas, I think Vegas was probably the time I actually felt like I was in vacation. And you know, typically I hate, I don't like Vegas and I don't like places like Vegas because I don't really drink alcohol at all and I don't like gambling. But I had a really good time because I was in a really nice hotel and um, I had good company. You know, we were up till 5 a.m. in the morning just having really good substance, um, you know, in our conversation. So, and that's worth it. Doctor Strange can get timelines. Anyone can do astral projection. Anybody. It's This is not, you know what I mean? If you guys really want to learn more about it, you guys can research into um, the Monroe Institute. Yes, companies is, you know, it makes a huge difference on when you're on holidays. So someone's saying, I had a similar experience during meditation. I sensed that the murder in the Danish submarine was a sacrifice and that the man wasn't working alone, even though he was alone down there. Well, you know, if you do have any of these experiences, like have a diary and keep note. And remember all of them and you can use them as a reference and I think that's really important so Alex the original um, topic we were talking about was the Epstein topic and my opinions on it and the misuse of fake news and there's so many different opinions but I, I really do think that he was murdered I, there's so many there's a lot of people saying that he's still alive and I don't agree with that theory, personally. The reason I got into the astral projection was because there is a source that I I really trust a lot of the information that she says, and uh, she said that she saw it in the astral plane while she was in astral projection, and she saw a lot of faces. She saw um, certain people in the hierarchical structure because he was, and he was put into a contract where he was actually forced to sign to only release the lower echelon names not the higher echelon 
got Kyle saying you can experience it in your sleep without knowing. Exactly. Everyone's going to different dimensions when they're sleeping. This particular source is, it's more of a personal source. Um, can we meet her? Um, I know she does do readings. Um, her name is Sarah Adams and she's someone that I've been following for quite a while. And uh, she just really has um, a really powerful aura and she just has so much access to her multi-dimensional self more than the regular person that, that I'm aware of. Um, and what she says really resonates like it, it, it on a soul level. So she's just someone that I always take into consideration what she says. The elite will make it seem like suicide. Um, a lot of important people were invoked in that disgusting sex ring. Yeah, and it's still happening. And it's still happening. So the more we expose it, you know, the more we get people talking about it. I'm sort of happy that this stuff is on the um, on the news because I want people to talk about these um, these topics because they're darker topics that people don't like. They go, oh, I've got kids. I don't like to think about that. But it's a real situation. If we really do want to help people and children and people not suffering in this way, we need to talk about it. So this will encourage people to actually look into it, I think. It will encourage them to not be not be not be so scared or think that it's just conspiratorial going, oh whoa, this is a real thing. Wow, there's these millionaires and they're really involved in all of this. And they were really you know, I think I think this is really major news. So Exactly. It's a real thing. It's a real part of occultism, negative occultism, and it needs to be discussed. And I get people on here who, you know, are a little bit afraid of that, and I don't want them to, to be afraid of that. I want them to know that it's, a, it's something that we can sort of change. It's so obvious what's happening that even everyday people know it's not a conspiracy anymore. That's right. But there's still a lot of people who are still sort of getting to that stage. And I just, I, I, you know, that's why I'm talking about it because I, I want, I want people to, uh, to discuss it. So it becomes regular, it becomes like, oh my God, this is a real thing. Who's involved in this? How can we stop this? Can we rise together, you know, and stop this? Yeah. So yes, it's, it's 1am in New York city and I'm actually talking about this. Um, I was going to go out, but I'm in Brooklyn and it was just it was a little bit too far. Um, so I thought that I would do a live with you guys. There has been the stereotype that people who have achieved success or wealth are good people who have pure hearts. I mean, not all bad people, um, you know, have money. There's still some good people that do have money. There's nothing wrong with having some wealth in this uh, reality uh, and dimension. There's really nothing wrong with that. I think there's also a taboo against, you know, wealthier people. Um, but yeah, I think it's about um, not defining anyone by money. I think we should define people by their energy um, and their actions. I think, I think more than anything, people put success maybe associated with wealth and I had a it's like, you know, there's a saying that I've told many other people and it's a saying that is very close to my heart and it's, if a man is rich in this dimension, what does that make him in all of the others? What does that make him? You know, what are we focusing on? You know, reality is multidimensional. We need to be aware of our energy in other ways. Yeah, so just different comments about, you know, Epstein. Oh, I mean, all of these people should be jailed and they should be trialed in a, in a, in a just way. Definitely. Um, well, okay, I got someone asking me, what are my thoughts on signs and symbols? Do they have a big role in your life? I don't have any tattoos, so they're asking me about tattoos. I just 
don't feel like I need any. Symbols are huge. Um, it's beyond that though, I think it's about uh, interpreting different energies that I experience and frequencies since this, my psychic stuff has really expanded, um, which we can all do. Um, there is a lot of symbolism, but I mean, it just, it, I, I don't focus so much on the physical symbolism because the, you know, um, I think that we should be going within and understanding and interpreting messages within. It's even more important than the external ones that we're seeing, you know, that are, you know, out there. I think they're more easy to understand, but, 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 but understanding the, the symbolism within you and how you feel and your intuition, I think it's even more important that people understand that because that's going to help you interpret everything else in this reality more accurately. <laughs> What's the main thing I've been focusing on recently? You know what? I've one huge thing, huge thing that I have I've really learned as a big lesson, I, I would say in the last few months, two, two months, we are never going to understand everything in this dimension. And I want to make this very, very clear. We're in a lower dimension. We don't need to understand every aspect of it because we are not going to. And that's fine. It's okay. The most important thing we need to focus on is actually harnessing source energy and opening the heart chakra and centering it. Everything else should revolve around that. And everything else will be, will fall into place when we start doing things like that. I'm just going back through some of the, um, comments. Um, someone's asking me about naturopathic medicine. I'm not going to be answering everyone's questions, um, just saying you know, but naturopathic medicine, do you think it's held up by sciences? I do think that a lot of, I, I do believe in natural chemistry. I don't think we would have our chemistry now if it wasn't for nat like natural chemistry. Um, I do believe in it, but I also do believe in certain levels of modern day medicine too, or modern day sciences. Someone's saying, I wasn't a fan of yours before. I didn't know you were such a different type of person. Um, well, thank you. A lot of people, um, I guess, don't know how to receive me at, at the start because they sort of have an idea of what someone looks like or talks like when it comes to these topics. But, um, you know, thanks for giving me a chance. When people do, I think that they see that I'm quite serious about... Um, talking about these things you know I do re I do my own mediumship work um, and I really I really really love connecting people to source energy it's what I live for it's what I think about every day of my life um, and I love that part of my journey it's probably the most important thing some may understand that some may not Hey Fez, I just saw you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for the nice comments that people are making. Okay, so someone's asking me, who do I pray to? I pray to source energy. Um, I guess that would probably be the most easiest way to say that. Um, I don't believe in praying to deities and things like that. Um, I believe that they play a role and that they're powerful and they're in their own evolution. But um, I, I, I believe that there is source creator energy. And I think that it's in everything. And um, it runs through us and we're fractals of it. And so I, I pray to that in a, I pray to source energy. Because, um, I mean, it's hard for me to, to, it's hard for us to interpret it, you know, when people, people reference that as God. 
you can call it whatever you want. I guess that's why I was initially hesitant. <laughs> What do I want to accomplish with my life? I want to help people connect to source energy within themselves. I really, it's not really about me, any of this. I do it because I, I just want to help empower the collective. I really, really do. Every person that I've met on this trip, I talk about spirituality. I talk about, I talk about all of these things because it's like, I just want, I want people's hearts to feel, to feel that. I want their heart chakra to, to feel source energy even more so when they interact with you know people who maybe have a certain resonance like I, I I just want them to discover it within themselves their own power I want this whole collective to heal itself that's what this reality is all about it's about healing it's just one big healing process Do, how do I like the states? Ah, uh, you know, I like it. Sometimes I don't, um, you know, but can you like anywhere 100%? You know, um, it's different. I'm traveling, so I'm dealing with little hiccups here and there. Um, I'm definitely happy to be on the East Coast, but I'm, I'm just transferring so much, which gets a bit overwhelming when you're by yourself. I'm in Brooklyn. Go get some chicken and waffles and sweet chicks in Williamsburg. You will find the sauce. <laughs> I, I can't do that. I can't do the chicken and waffles thing. I just, um, not my jam. What brings me to New York? So the reason I'm in New York is because uh, my shaman is actually based here. Um, uh, he picked me up from Staten Island this morning and brought me to Brooklyn. And um, I'll see him tomorrow morning. He'll be back here. Um, and it's spending time with him. He's very, very well knowledge on things. And um, we really have a really good connection where we can help each other expand. And my, my shaman actually does holistic um, kinesiology um, training. So if you're ever in the New York area and you're looking for that, he's absolutely amazing. And he will not only empower you, your physical vessel, but he 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 will really, really empower your energy. He's re, he's um, really ch helped change and transform my life in many ways. Are we a part of Source? And if so, what is a trait of ourselves that expresses that the most? Your love. That's what expresses it the most. The love you have for, you know, say your child, animals, nature, the sunrise, uh, your parents. Um, we're definitely part of source. We're fractals of source energy. And it's the most beautiful realization you'll ever have in this life. And, and along with the realization that love is, is that greatest power. Do I smoke anything to feel more? No. I don't. I don't think people should rely on external substances too much. Those things can help, uh, particularly for medicinal purposes. But more than anything, um, you can actually transform the chemicals and cells in your own body. And breathing is probably more effective than than any of those things. I'm breathing, we're doing conscious breathing. How does how does my shaman in particular generate this power he's able to share? You know, there's ones that you're going to meet in this dimension, on this planet, in this life, that have a different resonance. They have a certain level of soul evolution, and they're able to transmute energy here in a very powerful and beautiful way. And they're an experience, and when you engage and talk, high dimensional energy can run through that person, and it will really, really affect your own soul energy. And that's such a blessing when you receive that. You know what I mean? Um, and I can usually tell quickly when I interact with people, you know, the nature of, of their own, um, I guess, soul evolution and energy. Um, I'm just going up. 
Thanks for the love, everyone. Do I meditate every day? Um, I wouldn't... Okay, it depends on what you consider meditation, if you're talking about traditional meditation. Um, but I definitely would say that I meditate, yeah, in a way where um, I try to connect to source energy as much as I can. You'll get to a point through your journey, if it's really genuine, where everything that you do, everything that you do, you're going to relate it to how, how what is my resonance? Is this empowering my resonance or is this lowering my resonance? You know, that's what's that's what's really important. I think it's it's we have to understand. We have to understand that we um, you know, we have we have control over this and um, you can do it through so many different ways. You can do it you can do it by listening to most be a beautiful piece of music you can do it by watching uh, beautiful nature and being out in nature and I'll try and find little ways to do it. but I, I think music's probably my biggest biggest way of doing it conscious breathing by the way is again uh, I put that like right up there that that for me has such a profound effect and it can do and within within a few minutes of that breathing can completely like your whole field, your whole field will affect it very positively and powerfully. Have you traveled into another dimension? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, we, we all have. <laughs> Just going to let you know. Early mornings or late nights? You know what? It used to be late nights, and right now it's late night, unfortunately, but only because of the time zone. But early mornings, yeah, I think when I turned, like, when I went into my 30s, I really appreciate early mornings. I think that they're just beautiful. There's just something about at the start of the day. You know, I came across this really profound question. This, this, this is, this is so profound. Um, there was a question asking people. If you were about to go blind and you could see one last thing before you went blind, what would it be? And I was like, wow, wow. Like, you know, you have so many thoughts come through your mind, but the number one thing that I could think of, besides uh, maybe a child or I don't have kids, so I can't really say that. Or, or a loved one. I don't. I don't have a husband. I don't have a boyfriend, so I can't say any of those things. Um, it would really be the sunrise. It would be because in that moment you could connect to so many, so much beauty and power and 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 um, just energy, and it's the start of something. I love sunset too. But, but sunrise, sunrise, is, it's like the start. It's, it's the start. It's not the end of something. It's the start. And I, and I appreciate morning so much more because of that. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to have a different opinion on that and, and whatever resonates with you. But it's really interesting to think about. So I'm saying, can you tell me one thing to be happy about this moment? You're alive. You're alive and you're breathing and you have the conscious choice to fully feel and embrace love in this moment. Do I do anything to cleanse your aura? I really suggest breathing again, guys. So many things you can do and I've, I always get asked this question, but... Conscious breathing, I would probably say within the last month or so, I really just gone, wow, since I've been traveling, when I was doing the, the certain types of breathing, um, that completely changed my, my aura really got, felt so much better. I have received some energy healing. I did receive some energy healing when I was in Beverly Hills. Um, and that was really powerful. I went into really powerful meditation. Um, and I did receive energy from my mentor who's who's based there. Um, 
you know, laying over the hands and the crown chakra and everything like that. It was a, it was a healing process. Dealt with certain things within my family and lineage, and um, that healing was amazing. I felt I was very open. I was, whoo, <laughs> very very open. I'm in New York for a week. Well, but the breath is very symbolic to that person that's making comments about the breath. Thank you so much for going live again. You're a bright light in this dark world. Good night, sister. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the love, guys. Whenever you talk, I always take notes. Imagine if you did mentoring, I would join in a heartbeat. Well, thank you. That's really kind of you. Um, I'd really do that. That is the plan. You know, that is what I really do, you know, want to do. I really want to help people. If I, you know what, if I, if besides this monopoly system that we're sort of stuck in, um, if there was one thing I could do, I would just want to be a healer and I would go want to go all around and, um, do different healings and help people. Um, I, I can't think of anything better that I'd want to do. What is my opinion? Sorry, I'm not asking, uh, answering everyone's, I'm just, because it flips so quickly. But, um, hello to everyone who's joined. Um, what is your opinion of psychic readings? Look, I get asked this question quite a, uh, quite a lot. And I think that psychic readings, um, you're going to get your good ones and you're going to get your bad ones. I've only ever had a few psychic readings ever in my life. Some are... I've had good ones, um, but that's only because I only go to maybe more highly recommended ones or people, the through people that I know and sort of trust. Um, but you're going to get dodgy ones. And you'll know because you'll be like, this isn't right. This is really way off. You'll you sort of be able to tap into it and know how you feel. Um, but you're going to get good ones as well. You're going to get good ones that are like um, really able to um, tap into family members and that. And it's really got to do with the quantum field that we exist in. They can extract information. So when something in the past happens, right, it doesn't mean it dis disappears. It still exists somewhere in another timeline. And that's how I do it. I've done, I've had psychic experiences where I see things before they happen. I actually literally have a vision of it it's in my third eye um, or dreams. I want to educate myself more about what you're talking about. I mean, there's people you can go to. There, there, there really are different sort of workshops and classes. But it's really an inward journey. Um, and when the time is right for certain things, you're going to know. Um, I would probably... There's different aspects you can go from. It's a lot. I don't know how to point certain people like in one direction. Because it's, it's like that path is going to cover a lot of different topics. And those topics are different for everyone. Like when they're ready, they'll all sort of come in. Um, but if you really, really want to know every day when you wake up, know that you're, that you are multidimensional. I think that more than anything, know that you are multidimensional, that you're capable of doing this and this and this, and you're just experiencing a certain resonance, um, but you can connect to your higher self. <laughs> um, we can yes, there's someone here but why when everything changes moment to moment we can control our destiny look the thing that you've got to understand about psychics is that a lot of psychics will tell you including my shaman will tell you that it's not actually locked in stone it's worked off a bit of a probability and there are different timelines, but they're working with maybe your journey at that time. Um, but things can change in a person. And you do control your destiny because you're you are you're a manifester and you are a creator. So, um, 
it's not that it's completely locked in. It kind of works off a of a probability. Uh, it's you know it's weird because I'm going to tell you guys something that's very very personal. I had a dream of my father's death. My father actually died last year, and he died of the exact, well, of the ex exact in the exact way that I dreamed. Um, and that dream was very traumatic for me. And I woke up, and my whole face was wet uh, because the trauma from the dream, or the or or, or how I, the emotion that I'd received had actually manifested in this dimension, and uh, my body physically reacted, and I was crying. My whole face had, was just wet, full of just was just wet because I'd, I'd been sobbing in the, in my dream, and um, so this is this is this is in relation to what people are saying. Um, like, uh, if, you know, if it's, you know, that we control our destiny. Um, in the dream, he, I, I messaged him straight away when I had the dream because I, I, oh, I was so confused and I, I was just like, oh, I'm so sorry, I love you and, and, and whatever's happened. You know, we didn't have the best relationships and bad things that happened in my family. But I forgave him. And it's like the dream almost was a warning for me that you have, you have time to heal. You have time to to heal what's going go, going on and you know a few months later he did have a he did have a um well the in my dream he he had a sudden heart attack that's how he died a few months later he he did have a sudden heart attack but at that time there was a specialist he was in indonesia at the time he had a specialist that was there a stint specialist and was able to do this amazing you know surgery which actually prolonged his life for quite a long time like 7 some to eight years um, but last year he still died of a sudden heart attack yeah uh, so it's weird it's like he still it's like it happened but he got a second chance for whatever reason or if it was maybe because I did a certain level of healing between our relationships something happened it's like he sort of got these years to sort of heal certain relationships in his life and to receive um, love you know source love in a certain way and uh or you know just uh all around healing but he still died that way and it's it's just it's very interesting you know we can do someone saying you control your dream oh, well we don't control all of them you know this particular one i was tapping into a timeline that was giving me information like from the quantum field that we exist in um, and I have dreams about other people I have dreams about people that I've never met before but they're like friends of friends and they've got messages to tell me so once you guys start to understand things from and if you if you tap into your own medium abilities um, or psychic abilities it changes your whole perception on this topic because people you'll try and you'll answer from a logical perspective and what your belief system perspective and what you've learnt perspective but well, once you start actually experiencing this shit it's different it changes it changes your whole opinion because you are experiencing it people say to me oh, I used to be like you used to believe all of that stuff and then I got over it people actually have actually said that to me and I'm like you know or they go um, do you really, do you really believe all that? Or do you, you know, do you really question this and that? Uh, uh, but I'm like, I'm experiencing this shit. Like, this is real. Like, there is no logical explanation of how I extracted that piece of information about that person that I've got no knowledge about. How did I, how did I, how was I able to extract information that was that accurate? It's, it's, it's not it's if we just work on our sciences and our and our forms of logic it doesn't even fit into that so you know for me it's not it's not about trying to prove something to myself i'm experiencing this shit so now it's not just coming from like a journalistic you know because you'll get different types of researchers you get some that are just completely journalistic all fact and logic based and they're great and they have great work but if they're not tapping into things if they don't actually experience this stuff it doesn't re it's not the 360 it's always just this external sort of um opinion and research on things it's not something they're fully experiencing for themselves just going back up thank you for the love everyone I don't 
think it's a Becca. Alex just said this gets stronger as we age. I don't think so. I don't think it has anything to do with the vessel, the body's um, age. I think it has to do with your own soul evolution and 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 your own, um, you know, choice, your own decisions, how you choose to evolve, and and stuff like that. And some people are just born with certain things. Like, I think there's a lot of different factors, but it definitely doesn't have to do. I think the only thing that can come with age in this dimension is perhaps a maturity that comes through time. But you can have other people who, who come into this life and, and they're, it's like the very old souls. And they just have such a profound, um, you know, view and perspective on everything wisdoms that just come from them and so you're like where is that coming from you know because i've lived on this planet for maybe 20 more years but i've never understood that perception of something so we can learn from everyone <laughs> um everyone has different gifts someone said we all do have different gifts but when it comes to certain abilities like accessing more of the spectrum uh, in a way that gives us more access to psychic work or those abilities, I think we can all do those. When and how and that, uh, you know, I think that that can differ. But I think we're all capable of these certain gifts. Some people might be really good at playing tennis. So that's one time. That's, that's a gift. Some people are really good at doing mathematics. That's a gift with, with the... Consciousness stuff, everyone can do that. Someone's saying a good friend of mine can read people's uh, fortunes with painting. She does uh, blows people um, and skeptics away. You know, it can be done, like the actual medium of it can be done in so many different ways. So many different ways. But it's the same thing essentially. They're just connecting to source and accessing stuff from the quantum field. How they're portraying it or how they're, you know, bringing it into this dimension, that's what's different. That's how it varies. But, but, but uh, it's really just connecting to source and the field and merging it in this dimension. Um... Reincarnation, I definitely support. I just can't, and I wanted. I keep wanting to do videos on it. I keep wanting to do videos on a few things. I know I was meant to do one on the giants and stuff too, but it takes so much time to do these. Um, but that's why one day I hope I can just, you know, this will be my my what I do full time, so I can, you know, really put it out there. But I definitely support reincarnation. I don't even question it anymore. I learned many of my gifts through numerology, like master numbers and life paths, and many more. It's deep. Yeah, I mean, they're guides. They're just guides, though. You know, what? however you want to evolve to enter what level is completely up to you. Podcast still. <laughs> Oh man, do I want to do my podcast. There is so much. Oh, I just, I, I really, really want to do it. But it, it's not easy to put together. I'm sort of just doing this by myself. Um, you know, um, and I'm on call like seven days a week. And that's probably the hardest thing that's been put into it. And it's really not an excuse. It's really... Um, um, I really want to do it properly, but I, re I really need like someone else to do it with because it's, it's it's a lot to put together. At least on the topics that I that I go into, they're very heavy, um, and so I rely a lot on my story to push with a lot of the information because it gets they get thousands of views. And um, but it's gonna happen. I already know it's gonna happen. Just be patient a little bit. There are some other things, projects that I have also outside of my full-time job, you know, sort of work. Um, yeah. No, I haven't read Soul Survivor. 
You create your own reality. Yeah, well, we do create our own reality. Um, I think what people have to understand, though, is that we are part of a collective consciousness. And because we're part of a collective consciousness, there are other things that interfere with our reality that we might not have full control over initially. Or we might wonder why we're dealing with certain things. And it's because you're interacting with other energies all the time. And, uh, yeah, so being a creator of your own reality, you know, it's a continuous process of, of learning and understanding this situation, this how this might affect this, and, and healing our own, uh, healing ourselves, and, and, and trying to help heal the collective is what is truly going to even give us more of that power. And do you believe we can manifest with the use of intentional dreams or even lucid dreaming? Yes, absolutely. Your thought, pa your thoughts are energy. Okay, let's collaborate. People have to be with me, though, I think. Um, it's the technical stuff that I need help with, as opposed to just having a, a partner to, to talk on radio with. I used to have a radio show, mind you, so it, those kinds of things I know how to put together, but it's the technical stuff. Ah. <laughs> uh, Someone's asking me, what's your main goal in life and what's the most important thing you should, um, should people try to do in life? I mean, I think that's a very individual question, but um, I did already mention it earlier in the video. If you go back, I, someone did ask me this question. It's really to connect people to source energy and it's for my own self-mastery and my own journey, but really to empower the collective, to connect people to source. <laughs> so this person yeah well I mean you know we're we're all continue continually learning do you think we are biological computers in a sense yes but not in the third not in not in the sense where you actually picture a computer physically I kind of think that uh, but I, I do think some things, like I think we do operate on a quantum level. I dwelled into lucid dreaming. We had some powerful and had some powerful dreams, which were kind of scary. Really opened my eyes about this reality. Yeah, um, you know, some of that's your own thought patterns manifesting. So, it can be many different things. Um, but I, I think that, um, I think that people go into lucid dreaming and they don't fully understand what's happening and, um, they can get scared by things. And I think they need to understand that anytime you access something which is like above the norm or powerful in some way, I think it's about understanding, um, that it's for healing purposes, everything. Hello to anyone who's joined in. So if you're trying to control it, it's really about healing. You'll heal. You'll control it by healing, healing it. Okay, so you're saying, I don't mean scared of things. I mean of the power we have to shape our lives. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, yes, that's definitely. The power is scary. I mean, amazingly scary. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'll probably put like amazingly scary. Greetings and blessings. Pure knowledge as usual. Thank you so much. That's really kind of you. I can feel your positive energy and I send you love and light from Oxnard, California. Thank you, West Coaster. Thank you so much. I go into another world when I dream. 
Yeah, we all do. Everyone is going into different dimensions. Uh, the sooner we all realize that, um, the more we can expand, to be honest. Everyone's been really great, you know. Um, I really love it when people tune in to my lives and, you know, they have a good time having a chat. I, I, I really appreciate all of that. This week will but may, mainly be focused on spending time with my shaman. Um, he, um, you know, we're, there's a lot of things we have to talk about. You will want to create a podcast. You also mentioned being a mentor. You could join the two, perhaps. Oh, definitely. My, my, you know, definitely. Um, I really, really want to get into... Um, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I, I, I don't even doubt it, to be honest. How it's going to happen. There's a few different things that have presented themselves. Even on this trip, I connected with a few different people. So I think it's, I think it's going to work out. Um, I just don't know the exact path of things yet. You know, this trip was one thing that was going to, I was like, it's going to help me. I'm going to have knowledge on certain things and I think it's going to, yeah. Are you single? Okay, guys. Only serious questions. The person, oh, almost dropped my person asking about how to astral project, um, you should research into the Monterey Institute. How do you keep your integrity while dealing with soulless avatars running on the matrix programming, as Billy Carson calls it? <laughs> oh, if my shaman was here, he'd also laugh at that. Um, look, it's not easy some days, but I think the more expanded you get, the stronger you get, the stronger you get, like it's different. It's like when you start to analyze people, it's not through hate like before. And this perspective of like, eh, I want to rip into this person or I just want to hate on this person. I actually feel compassion for a lot of them. And I think that's when I was like, okay, I think I've reached a certain level of maturity here because this is how it's processing for everyone. And that there's, there's just it's just healing there's all this these traumas that people have and they become certain ways because of their childhood or any of these aren't excuses but when you want to heal the collective you're like wow all this shit is happening in the world because we need so much healing can we focus on the healing you know i i feel compassion for a lot of these people that are walking around and I'm not here to save all of them. It is what it is. But I can't help but feel a compassion for the for the lost souls that are out there. I, I really do. It's so hard for me to hate people. Like, I think when you live more in your heart chakra, it's very hard. The only thing that ever makes me truly angry is when people I know are accepting, like, they're being used by darker energies and they're just willingly going along with it so if there's anything related to the cabal or anything like that um i i really can show aggression and that's i don't think that there's anything wrong with showing some aggression towards it because it's in it's intentional manipulation that's unnecessary it's causing pain to people that's unnecessary i hope that makes sense um but yeah, I, th I think that just dealing with people like that, it's, you just have to come from the heart chakra. It, you're less reactive to almost everything. Does everyone need a spiritual leader or can we figure this out on our own? You can figure it out on your own. All you need is source energy. All you need is source energy. And source energy will, will connect you in so many different ways. Um, you know, to your higher self. Um, but having a mentor, having a friend, having a source that you can rely on always helps. But don't ever forget, you always have your higher self. Always. Do you believe we're all gods? 
I believe we're all fractals of source energy, but I, I, I don't... I don't understand the term, like, I know it's used a lot in New Age sort of stuff, like, we are gods, we are gods, but I still feel like there's an undertone with that saying that there's some sort of level of status. Why does it matter if we're a god or not? I think what matters is that we acknowledge that we're fractals of source energy and that we have access to that at all time because we are that, but saying that we are gods, there is a level of I don't know, like a status. And I think if you go into our DNA, and I think that you go into maybe different, we understand different star constellations that we might be from. I think there's different races that have different, you know, I think the hierarchical structure and all of that are from certain races and it's in our programming. But like, why do we all have to be gods? Like, why do we have to be superior in some way, like with a title? You know, we just, we're source energy. Refractors are source energy. That's it. It's just simple. Will I be joining Billy Carson's mystery school in October? No, but Billy often wants to work with me. I did speak to him on this trip and we just, our schedules just aren't aligning so we can't meet up. Um, but he has, he's often stay. oh, we will work together with actually we don't even doubt it we we already know that and when that timing is right um it'll happen because i'm not based in the states it just makes it difficult uh logistically to get things done otherwise i would be with him at different things do you think a lot of people who teach are giving out false information don't you think they're confusing people and putting them on the wrong path there's a lot of disinformation, and I'm going to tell you something really important. Anything channeled in this dimension to a degree is going to have a level of distortion because that is the construct, like you are in a lower dimension. So all these people that we're going to, there's going to be some level of distortion. And some people go, well, great, great. So this, everything's distorted. You know, it, it, that, it's not about that. It's about just understanding that you're in a third dimension and all you can do is work with the best that you've got. Trust your higher self. Gather different pieces of information. Put it all together. But connect to source because that's the stuff. You'll know. You'll even have an inner knowing on what's accurate. You'll be able to feel it. You'll be able to feel if something is high resonating and if that information is high resonating. There's a lot of disinformation that's going out there. Are you ever going to have complete 100% accurate truth even if there is a person that's telling you the most likely or or whatever they're still not going to be able to answer everything anyway and that's okay cabal dark energy talk more about that please you know there's not something i like talking about but all that stuff needs healing i basically You know, I met up with uh, one of my Mexican friends in LA. He's a deeply spiritual person. I can just read his soul energy like it's very genuine, very seeking. And he'd tell me things like, you know, I had a dream. Um, and in this dream, um, you know, this thing is trying to get me and it's trying to get me. And it's so evil and it's so evil. And we just, I think what's more important than anything is that we understand that we are within a duality. It does have a polarity, right? You know, but it's part of the programming here. People only affiliate what's good, what's bad. It's, it's always such a, you know, like it's so wide, that polarity. This reality wants to heal up out of that. It doesn't want there to be a wide polarity anymore. It's in, it wants ascension, like it wants the healing to be done. Because in high dimensions, those polarities don't exist like that. All this cabal stuff, it's, 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 it's intentional, it's manipulative, but all of it needs healing. But that will heal when we heal ourselves. Um, anyway, it's going to cut me off, guys. I've got eight seconds left. I know there's so many other questions and everything. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in. I love you.